You know, every time I start up this game, I say to myself, I'm gonna go zanier. You know, not... Not super save scum, not go back. Not be afraid of what might happen in this character. And every time... I go back to old habits. I'm gonna keep working on this. I sort of apologize, so I sort of don't apologize. I mean, you can only apologize so much for your nature. Okay. So, inspect the buoy, doomed hostile. Uh, let's see. Talk to Guard about this, see what he thinks about the doomed hostile. Make Titus give up Ruby's location. Split a kilo with Kuno. Take down Kuno's dad. What day is today? It is it is Wednesday. Okay. So I think we're fine. I we just have to remember to go to the smoker's balcony tomorrow. Ask another about the tattoo's possible meaning. Okay, call Alice back in a day for the armor. Oh, uh, info about the armor, so we should call Alice back. What else is there? Track down your badge. Sing karaoke. Who put the clothes in the trash? Joyce's info from the lynching. So we should probably go back to talk to Joyce. A lot of reasons, actually. But first, we're going to stop and talk to him. Can I help you? What's my bill for tonight? Uh, let's see, do I? Oh. Got the 20 real? Yup. Let's see, saw another thing of the whirling. There we go. Another thing. Great, I love those. Guard, I saw a sign that said I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go in the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. There might be something, in, something pertinent to the investigation in the kitchen. He rolls his eyes. He wasn't pan-fried, he was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with? He changes his mind. Fine, okay, the kitchen is closed until 13 o'clock because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that if you must. Gart, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, oh okay. Well, he controls his excitement well. I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. Aren't you gonna ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Pinball machines, pinball workshop. Or nothing, the black gaping maw at the end of time. <laughs> he shakes his head, there's no gaping maw. If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to, it's okay. But please tell me. Pinball machines, a pinball workshop. Ha, I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here, too. I knew it, he repeats. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. Why? Do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering. He appears to be making a calculation in his head. If you found pinball machines there, he's wondering about something business-related, about how much money you could make off of one. I feel a capitalist plot coming up. Or no, thinking of turning... Yeah, uh, yeah. Capitalist plot. He rolls his eyes. The pinball we have in the corner now is broken. I want to diversify the entertainment options. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here. Other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be really... Must be making good sense to him now. Sounds like he cares about this place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that it's part of the doomed commercial area. He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. I have to warn you. I may have discovered that the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? He looks mildly startled. Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that, that whole thing. So he knows of the doomed commercial area and its address. He's thought about this. Wait, so you know of the curse? Everyone knows of it. The Whirling is listed on the intercom outside as one of the businesses in Building B, 
of the doomed commercial area. I've been working here for a long time, and that inter intercom has never been used by the Whirling. Let's see. The Whirling was once part of the East Delta... was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade, which failed. Though, perhaps the Whirling will still escape the curse. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? He makes a sweeping gesture. This pre-revolutionary tile work, these high ceilings, these nice rooms, well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I kept this place up through hail and through sleep. F me of some doom ghost, he studies his voice. He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place, of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him really care about the whirling, huh? Yeah, he sighs. It's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way. Especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is part of the doomed commercial area. You shouldn't be so worried about that label, you know. I don't place much stock in the curse and so on. But the label frightens the clientele. Who wants to stay at a doomed hostel? Everything's doomed enough without that. Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here. Just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. There's an acrimonious note. It's clear he's doing the real work around here. Who named it the Whirling and Rags? Not sure as hell it wasn't the real estate company. Was it you? you? Look surprised. What? It's a great name. I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names too. It's from a song. A song? Hail Holy Queen by the Antenniers. Hail Holy Queen of the Sea, he quotes. You're whirling in rags, you're vast, and you're sad. Good pick, Lieutenant Nods. What about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them, he shrugs. Once a basement die frequented by chain-smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Krasmazov and Ignis Nilsson and those old ghosts. He's hesitating. Not sure if he should share this information with you and and, uh, information with you. Encourage him. And the others? The other is a kebab cart. It's very successful in its way, but it's nothing like the Whirling. Oh, good luck to you with this place, then. Luck has nothing to do with it. He looks to where the hidden room is. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. Against the doom, it's implied. There's a... Oh, so if you didn't... Okay, uh, there's a peephole in the wall. He startles. What wall? Upstairs in the secret back room, right next to Cla Clausia's room. I found it when I f found the pinball machines. I'll have, it I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. What a shame to fix such a good peephole. Alright, you've been notified. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there anything else? I hope not. Nope. We'll sing karaoke. Don't you worry. We're just not going to sing karaoke yet. Okay, so we're done with that. I guess on to these guys. But first, maybe cider? It's you again. What is it? Wow. Logic Impossible 18 presents a solid theory about why Ruby could have done it. And we just have freaking everything. Bam! A sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex. The hus... Hostile cafeteria is lit by its eerie blaze, floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotion, all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? So that's what you were squinting at, he looks at you. You are trying to come up with a theory, weren't you? That she did it. Yeah, he was cobbling together shit, so you could put her away. It's RCM 101. Well, let old Titus set your mind at ease then. She didn't do it. She was here all night. Lieutenant opens his notes. Sunday night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here all that time? Yeah, with us, drinking, near the stage there. Points to the karaoke stage. She didn't go to the bar for a drink? No. That's a lie. You know that's not the case. Alright. She took an effing leak, okay? For one moment. Maybe went out, too. She has an operation to run from her lorry. He points to the intersection. We're not 
getting into what that operation is again, cop. And just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot him. I've been... He taps on his temple. I've been through this. It's not plausible. He's been through it. That means he suspected her too. Alright. We're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for for some time during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on the roof. You do agree the shot came from the roof, right? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clausia's window from any other of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martinez. Maybe from the coast, but like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots, so no. Shakes his head. I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. There's a 72% chance that the bullet came from the roof. 72%? He picks up his beer. That's a percentage and all. Where'd you get it from? You guys in the lab? Definitely lie. Truth is not credible. Yes. We have a ballistics lab in Quran. We consult in cases like these. Wouldn't hurt to have one of those in Martinez, he nods. Still, all the labs in the world don't put her on that roof. How'd you get there? Climb? Have you noticed the winch out back? Or, no. Yeah, there's a secret... Uh, I think the winch is something else. A secret route in the kitchen that leads straight to the roof. How? He looks sincerely curious. Through what looks to be an abandoned pinball workshop. Uh-huh. People say there was a pinball arcade here. Sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade. The old man coughs. Weird place. Went bankrupt. Weird. How? You're wearing the pinball maker's coat. <laughs> what do you mean, weird, Theo? It's run by a fella called, he thinks, Knife Logs or something. Or a yellow dust coat, like the one you have on right now. He squints at you. Weird guy. Never liked him. <laughs> I love that extra detail. Because <laughs> I'm wearing the coat. <laughs> okay, but the man looks around. How'd she get up? There's no room for a staircase in the building. Or an elevator, for that matter. The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumbwaiter used for moving pinball machines up and down from the, the workshop. Good one, Kim. Thank you. The lieutenant is glad he got the floor plan right there. From there, the door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down, all in under seven minutes. That's quite the theory, he turns to Eugene. We need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. I'm on it, boss. Right where the law clears, me and Angus are going up there. It's a dumbwaiter, not an industrial lift. How about I go instead of... Shush now, he turns to you. Got some, something else to back up? Uh, you got something else to back this route up, or is that it? Who knows the winch out back? The outer wall of the whirling. I've seen the winch. I'm not blind, he nods. You're saying it's part of the elevator she used to get up there? Yup. That's one mystery down then, he nods. An architectural mystery? Doesn't much concern Ruby, does it? He knows it's something. He's just not ready to say you know more about Ruby than he does yet. There were pinball machines in the workshop, still operational. Right, what does this have to do with Ruby? Nothing, I just thought we could bring some down, get some new machines in here. Wow, man, can we? I mean, that'd be awesome. I beat that royalist machine 20 times now. All right, all right, we can get the barman to bring them down. What else? Found footprints upstairs in the old workshop. Footprints. He takes a sip of his beer. Recent? The tracks were recent, but n not worn down in the right foot like Ruby's. It's best to admit that pesky little polemic for now. Too confusing. Recent. A week or two. That close, huh? How fortunate. Well, look, I'll take a thorough look at those prints myself before I believe that cop. Okay, footprints. We're gonna try this again with the horizontal lines. Horizontal? See, they taught you well in the RCM school, my old man. A hunter and a half line wanted that. Could have said that. Horizontal lines. He thinks for a moment, then nods. Good news is, I'm still listening. He knows they had to be recent for those lines to still read. This wasn't a failure. Guess what? Remember that key I found there? Pointed the window. I don't like guessing, cop. No one does. It opens the steel door in the kitchen, the one that leads upstairs to the roof. This key, that looks at the hawthorn bush outside the window, was right there, with you, all the time. 
You didn't find it, but Ruby did. That's how she got up there. Quit jumping to conclusions, Theo. He turns to the old man. You took that key. Did it look like it was recently put there? The ribbon was old, faded. It had been there for 20 years at least. She could have put it back there once she was done. Why? He shakes his head. It doesn't make sense. It's damn interesting, but it doesn't fit well, and you know it. It doesn't fit well, but it fits, and he knows it. Also, it has to be said, the man would make a good RCM sergeant, or maybe even lieutenant. Just don't let him anywhere near women. We firmly established Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot? Firmly, he shakes his head. Firmly doesn't go well with could have. There's a route to the roof. Me and my boys need to check it out. That's what we've established. But a route, he forms a gun with his hands, does not put a bullet in his head. A gun does that. Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least the shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. Well, what if you miss interesting information that way? The choice is ultimately yours. Show them the antique rifle. There are weapons like th this just lying around, Martinez. That looks antique. A Belmar grave. He takes the gun, inspects it, and hands it back to you. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? There's a cellar under the bookshop. It was hidden there, with others just like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus, also broken. But still, there are too many. And there must be other caches, too. God damn it, we need to close that dump for dump down for good. Okay, I see your point. There are guns lying around. He shakes his head. Damn it, I thought we found all the old spots. Why was that still there? We just missed one. Ruby doesn't know about this place, boss. Just the cops digging up shit. Let's see. I've already established Ruby's running drugs. Could have smuggled guns, too. God damn. That's just about your favorite topic, isn't it? Titus slaps his thigh. Every five seconds. All I'm saying is, from what I saw in her cabin, she'd have no trouble getting a gun. Trouble? This is Revical. Or Revishal. Even the roid heads in the gym had a carbine. No one has trouble getting a gun. Still never saw her carry one. He must be referencing some past case of theirs. He's angry because he knows you're right. What he's saying only confirms your theory. I'm going to go for this one. It's probably not going to help me, but... It, at best, it's a small negative. I'm going to throw him a bone and see if he gives me anything useful. So there's a small 28% chance the shot came from beyond the roof. It came from the church. Like, part of the reason why I'm going for this is, if you check the map, there's... A cathedral in the distance that has a clear shot to the room, as far as I can tell. Yeah, goddammit. I know what a 72% chan me chance means. It means there's a 28% chance that it isn't that. He thinks for a moment, and 28% is no small chance either. Just making sure we're on the same page. The lieutenant pretends to take a note. It doesn't all fit. We're sharing info, candidly. Titus doesn't reply. Probably a good sign. I didn't say I'd prove she had a murder weapon. Just that we need to find her. All right, cop. He nods. Keep talking. I'll tell you when I've had enough. T, we're not seriously considering it, are we? He almost gets up from his seat. Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase 3 motive. Last component. Lassia told me some pretty interesting things about... Uh, told me some pretty interesting things about Ruby. Yeah, like what? Uh, apparently she had a thing for Klausia. A thing, you mean? He tilts his head to the side and falls silent. Yeah, but... The fat man looks up from the table oblivious. They're both girls. Girls like to... Girls like girls too, Angus, Kim explains. Sometimes. This is one of those times. She liked Kla Klausia. Eh, what, Ki what Kim said... Screw you, the man can't believe what he's hearing. First she says she murdered him, now she's a... Wow, okay. It's a lie. Come on, Glenn, she likes Monica's titties more than you do. The mask smiles. Everyone knows which way the wind blows there. I did. I knew it. That's why she didn't have sex with me at Fatty's birthday party. 
She didn't have sex with you because you're 40 and you live with your mom, Dennis. Light laughter sounds off in the room. It feels nervous. Glossia said she made advances on her and she thwarted them. Ruby then threatened her and told her to end the relationship with the deceased. This is some sordid shit. The big man rubs his chin. It's also the kind of garbage our Miss Oranya puts out to cover her own ass. She just told us. Ruby made her scared and she spilled the beans. Maybe? Eh, she did tell us when we were close to arresting her. Figures. Looks out the window. That Ruby is a queer is queer as a cabaret. Now that I start thinking about it, so there is some truth to it. And that's okay. Some are queerer than others, and you can still be a hardy. He glances at Glenn. But if you bring your own personal shit into our outfit... If that's the case, then it's not right. He looks at Titus, then Elaine. But it's not the case, right? There are many pieces that fit together that way, Eugene. Face it. When Claudia came downstairs, Ruby appeared to know something was wrong. No, oh, man, that's just Ruby. She's got shit under control, the man explains. That's her whole thing. That's why she's so good. Plus, man, it's like female intuition, you know? Women talk to women, he peeks at Titus. Which is sort of why we need someone in on the team who they talk to. Or she knew what happened because she killed him. Not so useful. Titus looks at Elaine, then Eugene. Heaven hell, the blonde man is in some kind of anguish that makes him stare into his garlic bread bowl intently. It's not why did she kill him, it's why did she organize the cover-up. And I suppose you have a theory about that too, cop. She could have been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it, why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging? He went along, but she suggested it. Little man squints, eyes beady. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit, right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Plasio wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd been first. Time for a lo logics demonstration. Uh, Shanky, let's assume you killed him. I didn't do it. It wasn't my plan. You probably did, though. It's just a thought experiment. Think, Shanky. You killed him. You got up there, shot him down, got down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your buddies as part of a lynch mob or alone for committing murder? F you, man. I'd never F my guys over like that. He squeaks with indignation, especially for some bird. She didn't either. She would never do that. The blonde man looks around. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is effing stupid, Titus. Glenn, Titus looks grim. I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Ooh, so he didn't rule her out completely. And she skipped town. This is good. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A very small nod. And a trickle of tobacco spit on his lip. This is the only opinion he cares for. Yeah, I see it. He puts his beer down. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is, add it to your list of suspicions if you want. I don't know. Smiles a peculiar smile. I don't know where she went. She just up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me why. However hard I asked. Want to know why? Why? She was afraid I would tell you. Looks you straight in the eye. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. She knew there was evidence on her, and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. My fling's always incriminatory. Perhaps. He looks out the window again. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When'd she leave? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived, I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. What was she scared of? I told you. You? Me as in the RCM? No, you, as in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. <laughs> she probably knew me from my singing days, or no wonder she's afraid. I have come to declare the ending of the human experiment! <laughs> 
gotta go with it. I can't not. Uh, sure, the human experiment. That's real funny. He looks at you without smiling. You know, when I first saw you limp in here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply, but he measures you up. Now I'm not so sure. I'm gonna try other ones. Me, personally? Yeah, you, the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. Probably knew me from my singing days. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so same thing. What else did Ruby tell you about me? She says you have a funny taste in clothes. He scoffs. And that you won't stop. Won't stop? Until you have something on her. She says she'd heard of you from Jamrock, that you're a human can opener. Then you play suspects against each other. Open them up like cans. F in hell. The tattoo man shakes his head. I just... Did he just... Open Angus up like a can? Yeah, he did. He nods. Now we can whine about it. Whack him or go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day. Al, how about you? It's not an actual question. Silence. He nods. Is that true, Cam? Kim? Am I a can opener? You are insistent, he nods. Anything else? Anything? Yeah. There's something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see that she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus. This cop, he... But she was too scared. Do you have any, any clues on where Ruby went? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Uh, good effing luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, it gives a sharp look. We won't either. She's not really a... The man stares into his beer. Party candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Have you looked for her? A little, on the coast. Where have you looked for her, mo more precisely? More precisely? Uh, on the coast, past the water lock. He nods southwest. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Who's doing this looking? They're all here. You're all here. Who's that looking? He shrugs. Lizzie needed some air. So she didn't go to tell Everard. No, no one goes to tell Everard anything. He knows what he has to know. Fast. It's called a radio, you believe. The gardener may have played you again when she stormed out. She has her own plan. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure, there's some shit houses there. Cinderblock Town, Fisher Folk... They refuse to unionize, so that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where the junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We'll start there. The lieutenant takes a quick note. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red, dyed. She looks like a lorry man. You know what she's doing with the U-Land frequencies? What now? I have no idea. She looks around. Boys? She said she's building a... His voice is very quiet. A pale emitter. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing ULAN frequencies and a pale something. I, I don't know more. The guy barely understands what he's talking about. There you have it, pale something. Titus puts an end to it. It's not much, but it'll do. He'll have to. He puts his hand out. Shake it. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. You know, I'm kind of glad that they didn't turn out to be strictly bad guys. Like, it's actually a bit of a shame you almost can't recruit other people to follow you around. <laughs> you can't recruit more party members. It's like, it would actually be kind of rad in this game if there was, uh... If there were a couple sections... Oh, right. Time to put the body away. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour he looks less like a creature, more like a pile of intestines. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Okay. Search the body one more time, thoroughly. Your arm reaches out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery f flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. Here we go. His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. Put your fingers in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it. This feels right. 
The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, delicate to touch. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums. And in the back of the mouth, can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black, dark, red death. Pride open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes from... Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It's swollen shut, almost vanished, no larger than 0 .04, centimeters in ra 0 0.4 centimeters in radius. The edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. Kim looks in. It's a pen in his hand. His notebook is open at the copy paper. Kuno is silent. Touch it with your finger, gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index finger fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage, wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth right into his brainstem. The F is happening! Oh shit, see? Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. The bullet has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again, never wake. The Funksoul brother at the back of his head has gone dark forever. Push deeper. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance, it's gelatinous. The slug-like creatures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. This is what he used to regulate his emotions with. The cavity is here, right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of pen on paper. Effin, cavity C, Kuno's voice is hushed. Quivering with awe, push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of the skull. The cavity goes further. The entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward the, toward the skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper. Until you feel it, the tip on the tip of your finger. Sharp, serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. This must be the bullet. Interfacing easy, pull it out. You pick the sharp metal bullet between your index and middle finger. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth like a glove as you pull it out. Sweat dripping down your brow, careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. Effin' beautiful. A bullet, the lieutenant puts a small bag marked evidence under it. Drop it in. The bullet falls into the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, Unknown caliber. Rifled. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Keep it, lieutenant. A gift. No, no. You deserve it. We can log it later. The lieutenant drops the bag in your bloody hand. It feels light. He turns to his notebook. We need to add... The item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oral ent oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate. Back of mouth. High velocity temporary cavity and brain tissue. Small exit wound in the occiput. It's a occipital. So occiput? I don't know. He underlines the injury forcefully. How does that sound? Sounds like heaven. Opinion? Fatal injury. This concurs with the Hardy Boys story and Clausius. The click goes to the pen. And one last thing, we should amend injury number three, ligament mark. Treatment. It's obviously the Hardy Boys tampered with it. We should have known. He nods. I have my doubts. There are no signs of a struggle on his hands. No claw marks on the back of his neck, but still. His brow furrows when his eyes while his eyes glaze over. The lieutenant looks regretful for not figuring this out before. I think I need to wash myself. Oh. You really, really do. I'm glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling and Rag should come with the bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes. We should take a closer look at it. I'm certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. What happens next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my Kanima. I can transport him to the processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. You'll be gone? What should I do in the meanwhile? Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And with one, and one more thing, he looks at you in the eye. Great work, detective. 
The word lingers in the air of the basement. Far away ice cream makers are... Oh. Yeah, the word lingers in the air of the basement. Far away ice cream makers are buzzing, and the sea wind blows outside. Detective. After you bag the corpse, Ken will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks in even the main case, but it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. Let's leave for now. We'll bag him around, like, 7 or something. Or, I don't know. I'd like to get rid of the corpse sooner than later, but losing Kin would be a blow. So, next up, we want to go to the Kanima, because we want to call about the uh, car. That's one of the reasons why I didn't want to just immediately go. Uh, or let him go. Because I'd rather send him out slightly later on in the day. Okay, pull out the radio again. We were back about the ICP, about this serial number. Yes, the armor was produced by, she looks at her notes, Fair Fairweather and their facilities in Betancourt. Sir La Chef, uh, Sir La Clef in 42. It was part of a special order for Corday Pharmacy, a security form firm contracted to protect the interests of Oren Hayes Pharmaceutical Companies in the Seminine Conflict. She browses pages. So it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacie has been renamed several times over the years since the armor was issued. Do you know what it's called now? The most recently registered firm that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Cronell. And the one before it was Downwell. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom the suit was fitted. First, does the firm continue to work for pharmaceutical companies through all these name changes? Hard to say. Their client list is rather diverse and incomplete. The only constant seems to be that the mercenaries are always deployed in third and fourth world countries. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. There must be a record of the person who was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk to them, though. Yes, please try. It was imperative that we learn whose armor this was. Sure, call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more information for you then. Okay. Uh, let's see. Call the 41st. Let's see. Might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. And four. Sorry, sir. I'm under orders to give negative requests for personal information. Over. Understood. Okay. So we're done with that. We're very poor. We could use some money. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that... No, uh, maybe the church is not a good angle. It just looked like it. I mean... These buildings here, if you were a sniper, could maybe pull it off, but it'd be rough. Oh, he actually has something to say now. I, uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. Is she in trouble? Grace has told us where our cabin is. We only searched it. Still better than me, I guess. Told you there's plenty of others who tell on her. He leans in, but is she in trouble? It's going to be an investigation. Is it that bad? He lets out a whistle, looking ten years older suddenly. Man, what should I do? What should I do to help her? Really don't know. Damn, I always warned her to watch herself. Man, nothing to do now, I guess. Maybe I should keep my head down and work on my rhymes while I can. What's the plan with those rhymes, anyway? Oh, you know. The thought lightens him up. Tommy Lahams is going to be a musician. Spretz the gang. Spretz the gang. Yeah, I guess. But with the beat, but with beats, I got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. Ooh. Correct grammar is Tommy Laham. Why, Tommy Leham? Tommy Laham was taken. He shrugs, in a "What can you do?" manner. My real name is Jerry Lafitte. Tommy's way better. It's more him. I had another question, actually. Okay, I need conceptualization. How many skill points am I rolling? I got two. Working on three. I can level up my conceptualization. 
Just for rhyming, though? Seems wasteful. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. Damn it. Oh well. It was worth it. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's fine. We're fine. I'll use use that skill anyway. Okay, he probably doesn't want to talk to me. I want to go up here for a bit. Talk to this guy. See if he has anything new. Now that we have the boots. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Nope. This guy is no good. I'm gonna just try talking to a couple of these characters. I didn't notice this guy's goofy beret. Hola, wondering man. How can I help you? Okay, so we're not getting anything, at least from this regard. I guess that's okay. So why don't we go back and talk to Joyce? I think it's been long enough. We've made some really major progress since. And I don't care much for Joyce. She's not bad, but there's very clearly something going on. Oh, you know what? Let's talk to the working class woman for a second. Nope. Oh, and let's go talk to the We're going to go we're going to go talk to the bookstore owner. Hello again, esteemed officer. Nope. Nothing relevant. It's okay. I don't know. I I really do appreciate the the time aspect of it. Usually when I play these games, I get really stressed out by the the concept of a timer rolling over me, but I think in this one, it's just slow paced enough that I don't need to worry about like missing anything major generally, which is pretty important. I never like uh games where it's just like you missed all these crucial things because you were doing this other thing. Like I played Persona 5 a while back and it was kind of unfortunate. Because unless you did everything fairly perfectly, you actually just wouldn't be able to get all of your support conversation. She's not here. Went to the village on the coast, officer. See you there. Joyce says, note on the post. Well then. At some point, we'll go back up there. Oh, Kuno's dad? We should do Kuno's dad with, uh... Or deal with Kuno's dad. Looking for the parents of a kid named Kuno. De Reuters are at the end of the hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. So it's this one, probably. Apartment number 12. A shabby door hangs oddly with its hinges. Secured to the doorframe with a safety chain. An unpaid energy or er, energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Reuter. Your heartbeat quickens. Palms go sweaty. The siren of amphetamine is singing you her song. Looks like we found where Kuno's dad lives. Point to the bill on the door. Lieutenant nods. The place comes with three months' worth of utility bills. Knock lightly. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door, leaving the panel with a sticky one-shaped shadow and a marker drawn two. You'll need to equip chain cutters to enter. Right through the metal. That's a little annoying that I have to equip the chain cutters every single time. Well, a little bit of light B, E, and A. Breaking, entering, and assaulting. Snip! The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. The tenant looks worried. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick.
Uh, let's see. Phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine. Conveniently equipped with a straw. Lieutenant, I've located psychoactive substances on this table. Good, confiscate it. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens and said to something in the other room. Oh, right. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to take it. Yeah, I guess we can look at the porn mag. It's a pinup. Glossy erotica covers the wall, wrinkled from moisture. Yup. Air stinks with something sour. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed, a stained parka, some towels, and a duvet. Some socks, even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Hold up, Lieutenant. Look at that pile of clothes. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant has covered his nose. Slowly reach out your hand. Something underneath there underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. Keep extending your hand towards the pile. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There's something alive underneath it. Pull the blanket off. You see a 60-year-old fat red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol. And God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to a fleshy lump sticking out from the other end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching from time to time. And look, another foot is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Maxtor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. Maxtor is a gas company. He's wearing free socks from a gas company. They probably came with the bills. The men groan. Or, okay. The man... A uh, groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. Figure out what he's trying to say. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something. Then it dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pigs, he says. He's trying to call you pigs. Are you going to let a semi-conscious degenerate disrespect you? <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. Die. His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's asleep again. Well, he's, he's got to say his piece. This is Kuno's father, we're saying. Judging by the color of his hair, I'd say it is. The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls on his half-open eyes. I was expecting something worse. I think he's still quite bad. I mean, what he has come to. Lieutenant tilts his head. The man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but Lieutenant thinks to himself, at least it won't be beating his son. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you in the dark, empty and frozen. It's clear the person behind them is not awake. Hold on, what happened to his eyes? Can't you tell? It appears it happens to occasionally committed sub uh, exceptionally committed substance abusers. They fall asleep with their eyes still open. Not a pretty sight. This is serious damage. I'm still not sure he's not dead. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Effin' pigs. Looks like he's trying to communicate. Maybe we should help him somehow. What's there to do? We could turn him over on his side so he doesn't choke in his own vomit, but he's already on the side. Excellent form. We could take him to Remedy or St. Batiste, but he doesn't have any money for medical services. The almshouse would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'll be dead in a few the lieutenant stops listening to him. Years, months, weeks? Pile of blankets grunts miserably. I took your infantamine, old man. Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body. You won't be too thrilled to learn you stole his stash. First, the last thing keeping him functional. Well, that was just depressing.
go have an awkward conversation with Kuno, be like, your dad's gonna do himself in anyway. Time to find a hobby, or maybe a job. Maybe both. That's such a sad situation. But that's kind of true of, like, this entire game. It's not happy. And I think, to some baseline degree, when I play these video games, it is a bit of a power fantasy for me, being able to fix a lot of things that I wouldn't normally be able to fix. You know, at best right now, generally I can just be on a microphone saying things that make people's lives, like, just slightly better, or at least slightly more tolerable. And, like, it's always a bit of a shame to, like, play these games and, like, save the world and all this stuff and realize that, yeah, not so, not so doable in, in real life. And you kind of can. There's also people that are way better than me at it. So, I, I don't know. Necromancer pig! That shit was dark! Going in there like that! Brutal shit! Tell me! Kuno dies? You gotta pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuno's gonna go out in a hail of bullets? Gonna look like a fucking porcupine? Took care of the drug situation. Alright, so you got Kuno's Kilo. He rubs his hands together. Here's how we do it. First you give Kuno Kuno's Kilo. Then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way. Okay. Uh, street way. Aren't you gonna ask how I got past your dad? Word on the street is you sent your little friend in d distressed as a hooker, distraction style. That's some sick shit. He nods approvingly to Kim. Not a single muscle moves on the man's face. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo. He leans in. Then we shoot the shit. By kilo, you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. I'm keeping it. You don't need more drugs. You're 12. All right, he taps the side of his head. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno. Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. He squints at you. So Kuno's going to give you one more chance. No, this pig shit is major. Major effing choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This is an effing, o effing domino shit. It's hard to see how not giving the boy a bag of amphetamine would cause catastrophic ca cascade response. Hard to see, but easy to feel. Somehow, this will change things. Tick, tick, tick. The boy flicks an imaginary domino piece with his index finger. D decision time. What's it going to be? You going to F the Kuno? This is tough. Because on one hand, he doesn't need the drugs. He shouldn't have the drugs. He really should not have the drugs at, at this age. I'm going to stand up, stick to my guns here. I could not... It's like, on one hand, he's probably going to end up getting them anyway. On the other hand, like, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be helping Kuno here get his fix. And I feel like I'd be contributing to him effectively becoming exactly like his father along the way. I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of a no-brainer, but like I said, the question is do we do Like I was just talking about sticking to my guns, fixing the world, power fantasy stuff. Yeah, this is staying with me. All right. All right. He throws his hands up in the air. You F the Kuno. Everybody Kuno got F by his pocket pig. Just when we were getting our business on, the pig throws it all away. Told you you can't be trusted. Told you. I told you the little rat repeats it six or seven times. I told you you'd steal the shit. Relax, see, we got plenty of kilo. Kilo underground, in the tree. This ain't about that, he turns to you. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged the shit. Now everything's effed between us. How are you going to make this up to the Kuno, huh? There's genuine disappointment below the act, sire.
I looked around in there. It's not the easy life you've got going on in that department. You have to. Do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the F out of here. Yeah, we got plans. You know, I met your dad. How, how the F are you still alive, pig? You know, your dad's a half dead alcoholic. He was sleeping under some coat. So, under some clothes. What? His eyes become large and round. F right, Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. He snaps back. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. F and breaking and entering shit. That's n nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno n knew this. He points to himself. Kuno's F and violent fiend. Dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you'd have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Whatever scary thing he might have been, now is nothing. Yeah, Kuno's dad is effing nothing. He pushes on bravely. Effing coma shit. Stroke shit. Kuno's dad's so effing violent he had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be like Kuno's dad. Speed shit. Crime shit. Effing on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. Revishal West style. S stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. The whisper comes smaller than usual. There's a touch of grief in there. F you talking about sad. Kid breathes in and out like a boxer. Kuno's got hard shit. He punches the air. Death shit. Nothing shit. You don't have to turn into that. He punches the air again. Get your F and nun ass out of here before Kuno F's it dead. Another punch. F it? You think because you took Kuno's speed, Kuno's going to sob like a fu- Yeah. All right. Turn into- He pants from exhaustion. Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is Kuno. Is the Kuno is Kuno is that shit? Kuno won. You won, Kuno. The relief is palpable. Little hat jumps up and down behind the fence. There are tons of unpaid utility bills in there. F right, there were F in three years or some shit. That's no place to live in. You have to find somewhere else. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground. Le Royum Royaum shit. Ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in an effing catacomb. Yeah, in a tomb. The little one seems overjoyed to the prospect. Okay, find a job. Pay them yourself. Your dad can't handle things anymore. F that shit. Kuno's gonna move underground. Okay, same thing. Alright. Yeah, I did the right thing to not give you the drugs. Let's conclude this. That didn't change shit, pig. The only... That only made things worse. Effing social worker shit. It doesn't work, pig. It doesn't work, Kuno. Only our shit works. She must repeat it. Use every chance to confirm that version of reality. Okay, so at this point I've probably pissed off Kuno to the nth, de nth degree. Oh, and I don't think I'm fixing that. But you know what? I still am going to stand by the fact that I probably did the right thing. Maybe. I don't know. One way or another, I guess we'll see you guys in the next episode of Disco Elysium. We're just gonna keep plowing our way through things for better or worse. Mostly worse, but we'll get it done eventually. These guys seem new, but I can't talk to them. What about this? Okay, a rust and control panel with loose wires dangling from the hole where the indicator light used to be. A mechanical, le mechanical lever sitting in the middle. Pull the lever up. You grab the handle and pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk, then the water lock starts moving. It's weird to just have these controls out and available. But alright. All right, the lieutenant looks across the canal. We can go to the coast now. Ex expect rugged terrain and drunks. No, the bridge still isn't down, yeah? Yeah, so bridge bridge ain't down. I don't know who these guys are. Well, let's see if we can go find Joyce. All right, I was ending the episode. Whoops-a-doodle. <laughs>